What's up, Twitch and YouTube? Appreciate you guys coming through for the seventh episode of Around the Yellowhorn. We have a competitive legend, uh, amazing Twitch streamer, and all-around content creator, my guy K. Harry. Um, appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your day. I know you just got home from work. Uh, thank you so much for making time to come and sit down for a bit and, and talk all things Madden and talk a little bit about some of the, the projects that you've been working on, which um, I, I've been seeing your Twitter and, and you've been putting out these weekly schedules and it looks like you got a lot on the go right now. Um, so yeah, appreciate you uh, coming through, K. Harry. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I've never had like a weekly schedule, but now I'm starting to get more rigid. I'm starting to take this, I'm starting to take the next level up, you know? Like I never had, before Madden 22, I never had nothing besides Twitch. Yeah. So now I really want to grind up. I feel like yeah. I've, I've had a really good month and I want to capitalize on it. Absolutely. And like, I, you know, I've noticed, uh, and you know, everybody will say, you know, don't look at the numbers and stuff when you're, when you're streaming, just do your thing. doesn't matter whether there's two people or 200 people in your chat, but you know, you've uh, experience now, like having big numbers of people in your chat and, and doing some really cool events. Like I noticed, um, uh, you were hosting some uh, events for uh, Mutthead recently. Like, can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe we could start the stream talking about with your connection with Mutthead. How did that happen? First of all, yes, yes, absolutely. So before I start Mutthead, I want to give a quick shout out to Nick Mazesco. He is the greatest person I've ever met. I'm not yeah. exaggerating. So I met him in Vegas. Obviously, like, I've known him before. I knew him before Vegas, obviously, but I met him in person in Vegas. He was an awesome host. He, you know, he took a lot of his own money to cover a lot of the younger people in the group, and uh, got to know him really well. Awesome dude. And then um, that's kind of when it started, right? So we've yeah. interacted a lot since then. And uh, obviously, he runs a lot of the Mudhead stuff now. So I was invited to do a Mudhead pack and play last Monday. I hosted the Mudhead Open last Wednesday, and then I participated in FNF on that Friday. So it was an awesome week where I did a pack and play, really bad team, went the head to head. Unfortunately, yeah. I lost, but I had 86 Michael Vick as my quarterback, so not much I could do about that. Yeah. And then the uh, Mudhead Open was awesome. I had like 300 people in there the entire time. I commentated on it. I uh, was wearing a suit the entire time. I saw that. Given, like, I did a uh, Mudhead Red Zone where I had like a backup cam, with, like a little red zone cam, and just put my face cam on. Um, the guy's name but whatever his face yeah. is and uh yeah we had a lot of fun with that and um as somebody who's never like i i usually play madden when i stream yeah. that was the best stream of my life by like three times and I yeah. didn't have to play madden so That's it was a awesome. massive w all around for that and then fnf i got popped by spamming buttons but it is what it is he's a good player so oh um, for sure yeah <laughs> yeah so that's kind of the my head stuff like start i can't wait to do more stuff with them uh everybody said they really enjoyed it so i was really happy about that that's awesome, man. It's great to have a connection. Like, somebody like Nick Mazesco, like, he's absolutely uh, a treasure in the Madden community. Like, you know, he, he's kind of um, gotten his feet wet in, like, a whole bunch of different communities. So, you know, I, I see him hanging out in, in Fendler's community a lot. Um, you know, I, I see him hanging out with, like, some of the, the Uber comp guys. And, like, obviously, you've made that connection with him. What, what were you doing in Vegas when you – how did that happen? What were you in Vegas for when you met him for the first time? Uh, I was gambling and vacationing. Nice. Not bad. That's you, awesome. You can start Vegas stories already. God damn. <laughs> yeah, we're we're getting right into it. I, honestly, I uh, yeah, I, I got to hear the, the the deets here. So, who was on that trip with you? Like, uh, yeah, what group so was it, it was civil. It was Civil's twenty first birthday, right? So I went with uh, Bobby, Nick, my boy, funeral service. My brother actually flew out as well. And then, um, uh, if you know Jasper, he like runs like all the Pittsburgh Knights tournaments. So yeah. he was out there as well. Uh, Pretty much just went out every single night, awesome clubs, uh, awesome bars. There's a bar right by the Las Vegas Knights Arena. That yeah. was really fun. Was, oh, shit, what was it called? Anyway, like we got yeah. super drunk there. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Saw some people dance on like engaged girls. It was a great time. Obviously. Beautiful. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I've been to Vegas two times in my life, and but, but I did a very different Vegas trip. I, I've gone with my wife both times, so it's been a lot more tame than what you were probably experiencing that weekend. Uh, she's gone for girls weekends there, but I've never gone for a guys weekend in Vegas. So I don't know exactly what it's let, like. You let that, wait, so hold on. You let that happen and you couldn't have your own guys weekend in Vegas? It, in all in all fairness, she went once with her best friend. My, my wife's been to Vegas four times, actually. She went once with her best friend and then once with her sister for like, um, I don't know what the occasion was. Maybe for my my sister-in-law's 21st birthday, took her down to Vegas to, to party. Or it could have been, yeah, I think it was her 21st birthday. It must have been. But um, man, I, I love that city. When I last time I was there, actually, I think they were building the Vegas Knights Arena. Is it right, yeah. right by the Monte uh, Carlo, like down on that end? Did you know, like? Yeah, yeah, it, it was nice. Yeah, it's super nice, man. Um, didn't go inside. Obviously, didn't see a game or anything, but 
It, oh yeah, it's called a uh, Coyote Ugly was the name of the bar. But yeah, that was a oh. bar. It's like inside the hotel, and it's like based off a movie or something. I yes, think. it is. Yeah. 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 So it was in there. We went there twice. Uh, saw some absolutely wild stuff. I can't say on Twitch. I'll DM it to you later if you yeah, want. Yeah, no, but, no uh, yeah. No TOS violations on here. <laughs> yes. Well, time of my life. Had an awesome week. Uh, did not cheat on my girlfriend. And yeah, all beautiful. And and we're sticking to it. Beautiful. I love that. That sounds like a good uh, weekend. And, and so so you you said uh, a couple names like the guys that you're traveling with. So are these friends that you've made through the Madden community, like guys like Siv, or is that somebody you knew? Like, what's your connection with with uh, Mr. Siv? Because a lot of people know oh, that name, yeah. big time YouTube content creator, big time Twitch streamer, and um... yeah, absolutely. So I've known I've known Civil since 20 actually. So it started where I saw him run a slot in 20 in clubs. And as somebody who was not connected at all to the community at the time, mm -hmm. I commented on a YouTube video of him broadcasting a game, and I like said like civil, like you have run an awesome offense. I run a slot because of you. And it yeah. sounds super corny now, yeah. but, like that's how it started, right? Then I popped into one of his streams. We started to stream a lot after he won clubs. Yeah, and I got part pretty quickly afterwards. So like was one of his first subs. Talked to him a lot. Um, I joined a CFM with him as well, so I was able to interact with him even more there. And we've just been really good friends ever since. We lab together. He's an awesome dude. He's helped me a lot growth-wise yeah. with content. And obviously meeting him in person in Vegas was an awesome time too. But he's he's an awesome dude on, yeah. off Twitch, just is on Twitch. And when Civil Drunk is like genuinely one of the funniest people I've ever met too. He talks about like route combos when he's drunk. It's awesome. That's hilarious. And then now he's probably talking about delay fade being nerfed. I, I've seen his Twitter account has been in, in shambles for like the last week or so since the patch came out. So I'm sure the next time you guys get together, that's going to be one of the things he's bringing up. Up, uh, when he's had a few beers but um, that, that's awesome man. and it, it's so cool like that's something that I you know I, I probably got into the Madden community probably around Madden 20 as well like uh, the end of Madden 20 I would say is when I started getting into it and I never in my life have had any experience where I've actually interacted with people that I've met in an online community I've never been a part of an online community you know so um, the idea that you can meet people from this platform and actually become good friends with them like I've been able to meet you know Guys like Up and Adam and Luch, like guys who live in my area and get together with them and, and see them fairly regularly. And that's awesome. Like it's yeah. it's such a cool thing. I don't know how much of that has to do with the COVID, like how a lot of stuff has become virtual and online. But yeah, it has 100 percent. I mean, I I first tournament, like I played clubs in 20 or like it was like out of 19. I was still in college then. But like yeah. as soon as I graduated, I played LCQ. I played all the CFMs. And like that's exactly the same time when COVID hit. So yeah. those were like the people I interacted with a lot at that time and then obviously yeah. 21 clubs same kind of thing interacting with more people and then you know now like it, it's a good you know close full circle right meeting guys like fendler and yeah I've obviously hobby a lot before uh nick again it's that nice connection now that covid's kind of over uh, yeah I get to, yeah a little bit around. a little bit over yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's a nice full circle there because this is the first online community i've been a part of as well yeah, that's awesome. And, and you know, I was, it's, it's funny, we were in Discord like a few minutes before we went live and I said the first thing I'm going to ask you about is the Eagles and now I'm thinking, you know, let's leave the Eagles to the end because we're, we're kind of, you know, we're it's a free-flowing discussion here and it seems like we're talking about kind of those connections that we made. So why not talk about um, the events of this past weekend? So I, I was, you know, uh, after I hopped off stream and I realized Fenler was doing like this live party stream going on with a whole bunch of like my favorite streamers, people I know from the community. Uh, dubbed FenCon, which I think the name might have come up at the party itself. I don't think I'd ever heard anybody call it that ahead of time. <laughs> how, how was uh, how was the uh, the party at Fen's uh, this weekend? Sure, sure. So I streamed MCS from for like eight hours before I went up to, uh, to Randolph. So I live about an hour away from Fen's. I'm in, you know, Central Jersey. He's in like super North Jersey. Yeah. So it wasn't that bad of a ride for me. Uh, like other people like flew in from like Virginia, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Bobby came up from Philly. And then um, Nick flew in from, from uh, Phoenix, I think. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was cool just to see everybody there. I pretty much hopped in right at the start of the stream, which was kind of cool. Yeah. So I was able to, you know, get in, start drinking, having shots on stream. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Obviously, you guys saw a lot of it. The unbanned core I thought was awesome when we were all drunk. Yeah. Led by Bobby um, V. That was. Uh, he, he looked good with the gavel and the uh, the wig on, I gotta yeah, say. He did. Yeah, he yeah. Did. yeah, yeah, he looked really good. Um, but yeah, had a good time. We watched some NBA after. I uh, remember that Luka Doncic shot that he hit last week, that game winner against the Celtics. I saw that live, and we were all yeah. like, going crazy when that happened. So that was That's cool. Wild. Um, just want to say that Fenler is a even better person off stream and on stream. 
the nicest yeah. dude ever. His girlfriend and him were both, you know, excellent hosts. And yeah. um, I had a good time when I was there. I wasn't there for too long, like four and a half, five hours. Uh, my nice. girlfriend came up with me, and she had work super early the next day, so we left at like twelve thirty. Yeah, was totally fine with me because I had to play MCS or um, I had to go to the Eagles game that night. That yeah, day. yeah. So yeah, had a great time with Fend. Uh, definitely can't wait for the next one, and I'm short right away. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you, you got a pretty busy busy schedule. I know we were talking. You said like you're well, you're, you're you're streaming. Like how many days a week are you streaming right now? Like with your newer kind of more regimented schedule, what are you trying to get after? Yeah, trying to trying to go for like three or four times a week, and then yeah. YouTube twice a week, and then TikTok six days a week. Yeah, and then I'm streaming like this weekend, the following weekend for uh, MCS stuff, and then like girlfriend plans. You know, yeah. Christmas is coming. We do yeah. a lot of like Christmas fun stuff. Or like Hershey Park one week probably. Yeah. So you, yeah, it's like completely shot for me. <laughs> yeah. Kind of oh crazy. man, that that's kind of that's kind of the way it goes though. Like and and it's tough. Like you know, pe- people see streamers and think you know that we, we have all this time to to you know set aside like to to streaming. But like really, it, maybe for a little bit during COVID, it was kind of like that where I, you know a lot of people started because we had so much extra time on our hands. Originally, I remember starting because there were no sports on TV and I was working from home and I was like, well, there's literally nothing to do here, so might as well do this. But, um, you know, it's important to kind of figure out that work-life balance. I'm in the process of trying to figure out, you know, you know, how do I get back to the gym while also doing the stream thing and also working full time and also wanting to have a social life at at the same time. So it's it's definitely something we all kind of have to juggle. But, uh, you know, it takes a it takes a talented person to be able to make it work. So it sounds like you got a good good balance going on. And and. Have I'm you trying. found that that new scheduling has has helped you like with your motivation? Like to are you, are you kind of very goal oriented when you're um, approaching? Generally you? goal generally goal oriented. Um, this week was like the first week I, I'm like going back in the office, so I have to be even more scheduled because obviously working from home, you can just you know close your work computer and then boot up stream really easily. Yeah, now I have like mute. I have to get up at six fifteen in the morning every morning, so yeah. uh, it's definitely a lot tougher. But um, the schedule definitely helps out a lot. And then in terms of goals, like, I wanted to get, like, kick off the YouTube channel right away, right? Yeah. Get that, like, at a nice goal. I was going to do, like, some crazy challenges in December if I make if I uh, make the goal. Yeah. Uh, TikTok, I only have a lot, like, a crazy goal. I mean, I think I just put out good videos. I want to get to, yeah. like, 3K subs or 3K followers by the end of the year. I think that'll be kind of cool. That's awesome. And um, in terms of, like, stream and subs, I don't do, like, money goals or anything like that. I just, yeah. you know, if you, if you want a gift, that's fine. I love you, but like I won't like force or like create yeah. kind of like being like that. For sure, it, it's 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 weird. It's like um, you know, obviously, the more you want to put into streaming, like it's kind of like it, it, I can't remember who I, who which streamer it was that said this. It, it might have been um, I think it might have been Call Me Spree when he was on actually, and he said something about you know he was spending so much time playing video games that he kind of had to justify it by saying you know like yeah. I'm spending this much time <laughs> I got to do something cause, or else I'm yeah, just a guy yeah. who's you know, out of, out of school, getting older and playing a lot of video games. So it's kind of like, you know, it, like the su- the subs and stuff like that. It's like, you know, you're, when you're committing so much time to it, obviously, you know, it helps to be supported, you know, but at the same time, you don't want to be begging or seen as like a guy who's like, you know, trying to, you know, empty out people's pockets and whatnot. It, it, it's a fine balance. I, I personally, you know, I, I've done sub goals and stuff like that in the past, but I, I kind of made a conscious effort. Even as of yesterday, I was like, you know, I had these little sub goals and I put a little ticker up and I was like, you know what, that, when I have those up, it stresses me out. Like, it, like it, yeah. it, it just, it, I'm looking at it, it you know, because it's purple, it's bright, it's there. It's like, I don't want to have to look at that. I want to be able to, I, I feel like whenever I have a specific goal in mind, it, it just makes it harder to stream and actually, you know, do a good job of actually entertaining people. Um, yeah, but I totally agree there, man. I mean, I've never had a sub goal. Like YouTube subs is different because it's free, right? I'll, it's technically a sub yeah. goal, but not like, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I've never had like an actual sub goal. I just really want to put you know good stuff out for the viewers, and if they want a gift, then you support me. Yeah, and obviously, I, like greatly appreciate it. But I never want to act like I want to extort money for people because some yeah. people like <laughs> store it. Really, I love it. Yeah, because some people are like actual full time streamers, and I get it. But yeah, some people like get, get a sub goal, and then as a result, they do a subathon. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. Piss me off because yeah, yeah. You got to a sub goal that's probably really high, and then you want more money as a result. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of crazy to me. 
I yeah, would, it, I would never do something like that. Yeah, I uh, honestly, I, I contemplated. I it's the longest I've ever streamed for. You you were saying you streamed eight hours just this past weekend. And that's like the by far the longest I've ever done. Yeah, I want to do myself after. That's wild. And if you're playing ladders for eight hours, it's every single game is sweaty as hell. Like that's that's a full time job right there. Like that's not a relaxing video gaming experience. No, but like and I, we can leave before MCS even, which is even worse. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like you know, kind of with stuff like podcasts or not podcasts. Sorry, with uh, subathons, it's kind of like your community has to tell you, you know, like because they'll tell you if they want it, they'll they'll be yeah. begging for it. And at that point, you know, I think it's it's okay to go ahead and do one. For me personally, I was thinking in the summer, I get two months off every summer as a teacher, and I was like, you know, that if there was a time that I was going to do it, I'm not doing summer school this year. I have two months off. I could do a subathon and have time to recover. Um, yeah. But even I, you know, I kind of chickened out. I was like, honestly, I can't. I, I saw a Fendler subathon, and I saw, you know, Problem subathon, and I saw like all these guys going crazy. I was like, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if every waking minute going back in front of a computer, like it, it's tough and it does take a toll. I saw DK Nice same thing doing a big subathon. Like it's uh, it, it's a grind. Yeah, it, it it can be you know financially a, a big you know windfall for you, but at the same time, it yeah. does come at a cost too. Um, giving up your privacy and uh, all that for no. yeah no i totally agree and the thing with those guys right is they're full-time guys i will never be a full-time streamer yeah i'll always do it outside of work so yeah. complete respect to those guys and fendler yeah. like in problem they have amazing amazing communities and yeah. they can pretty much do whatever they want with them yeah uh, i will never have that opportunity most likely yeah so i'll just you know obviously appreciate what i have right now for sure. And and what is it that you, if you don't mind going into it, I don't want to de deal too much with your, your day-to-day -day job, but what is it that you do for work? Like, so you got a full-time job as well that you juggle yes, with full, streaming? Full-time full -time job, straight 40 hours a week. I don't really say what I do. That's okay. Yeah, you don't have to. Stuff, but I go in, I travel in the office, I come back home, like every single boring movie <laughs> yeah. that you might have. I enjoy my job for sure, but like it's the... Yeah. I start off of it. Yeah, of a nine to five. Yeah, it's it's good though to have like that stability too, and it, it allows you to kind of not yeah, feel the pressure of like I have to make money this month or else, or else I got to do something different. Like you know, and I I'm a teacher by trade too, so like you know I got something and and I enjoy it too. So I'm I'm never gonna not want to be a teacher as well. You know, like no matter how good things are going on the streaming front, it's nice to have that that state stability. You know. Uh, for sure. Not being salaried, man. Big deal. Big, oh, big deal. 100%. 100%. That's that's grown person thing. Grown folk things, you know? But, you know, I, at the same time, like you said, like, I have, I have the utmost respect for people who are willing to, like, bet on themselves and, like, go out there and make it work. Because it's not easy. It's not an easy line of work, like, to to run your own business. I'm much more of a company man, you know? Put, give me a boss. Give me somebody who tells me what to do and, and looks over my shoulder occasionally. And, and, and let me have my weekends off to myself, you know? Um, that for sure, man. Same here. Yeah. But uh, so, so we talked a little bit about some of the connections, like some of the people you met through the community and whatnot. Um, now, I've noticed you've had a lot of, you've done a lot of amazing networking and, and your gameplay has kind of spoken for itself. Like people have taken notice. Um, you've been working this year with Virtual Lab Partner, VLP. Um, how, how did that connection kind of come about um, this year? Sure, for sure. So um, last year played in the Pigskin Junkie CFM, which, mm -hmm. you know, very content creator based. It was Zan, Cold45, yep. CJ. Yeah, uh, rally time. A bunch of those, you know, content guys in there. Yeah, like it was called what was it called? The clubhouse at one point. Yeah, that's so right. All those dudes were there, and then uh, I won two uh, Super Bowls in that league. I uh, played very well, and at the time, it was a really, really bad team. Like made the playoffs. Like took Zan to the one possession game with like the wow. worst team ever. And um, <laughs> you know, Colt and I talked, you know, afterwards, saying like, and the the ebook stuff I've been wanting to do for a while because I was doing like five dollar ebooks like on my twitch and like yeah. obviously that's cool but i feel like my work is a lot more is, a, is worth a lot more than five dollars right yeah so i sure. talked about with colt uh he you know, obviously was doing a good job with virtual lab part he didn't really have that pro connection yet and yeah i think that was kind of a good segue to bring me in yeah uh, in terms of game plans that i'm doing right now personally i have all my ace slot ebook and patriots offense on there i have not gotten outside of by 19 wins in a month and a half, two months in Weekend League. It's been well, really good. I finished at 38 for the month and then 39 last week. Um, incredible. So it's good there. And then my defense is uh, based out of dollar, which is now being meta. I've been running dollar since September. Yeah. You can ask, you know, Goat Geezy in the chat because I know he's <laughs> spamming some stupid stuff. He knows how crazy <laughs> my, uh, my sheds are and then man coverage is still really good in Madden 22. So I, I, I basically broke down 
every single zone that can cover with man. Yeah. Uh, basically, like, it's a super breakdown, like, crossing routes. You have to do this adjustment. Pose, yeah. you have to do this adjustment. And, like, all the different kinds of setups against a bunch of different formations based yeah. out of man coverage. So, something that I've mastered for now a year and a half, and I want to best convey it to all the subs. And yeah. uh, it's been fun. I've really enjoyed it. I've really interacted with, you know, a different kind of community I really have no interaction with before Madden 22. Yeah. Everything with, and this isn't just my stuff, right? Like, Colt does all of his stuff. So, yeah. as a member, you get both for one yeah. place, which is really cool. That's awesome. And, and would you say, like, the people that you kind of cater to, obviously, if people are out there, well, actually, maybe not obviously, like, so are, are there people who are out there looking for, you know, virtual lab partner content? Are they, are they like, the casuals who are looking to become good weekendly players or is it a mix of like casuals and also the comp guys who want to see you know what you're running and what you know unique kind of setups that you have because you know I, I imagine it's probably challenging to find something that's good enough for the comp guys to want to take a look at but also simple enough to understand that like somebody like me who's like basically a shitter can can pick up something from it did you find like uh like yeah well, who's the target uh demographic yeah you know? yeah so personally i think it's like 75 percent We'll want to take that next step or like from casual to like maybe top 100 in weekend league yeah and then, uh, there's some guys that i personally a lot of them are you know friends of mine that are in my discords yeah yeah a lot of them are really good and are getting a lot better as a result yeah. of vrp so i'll give you a good example right uh, my boy spy i'm not sure if he's in here um kid from philly awesome check dude. in we spy check in in the chat spy we need to see yeah. you in the chat <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. I don't know if he's here or not, but uh, last year, like I played him a lot in Madden 21 in this one league, and I just like beat his head in every single like, yeah. week. Right? And yeah. played him in the playoffs, won like 35 to seven, and I'm like, all right, you know, nice, nice guy. Obviously, we wanted to bring him in part of my community, and uh, this year, like he's gotten so much better. He's already won like thousands of dollars in like these kind of leagues, money games, damn, kind of, kind of like, running, running a slot. And uh, you know what? It's really cool, and uh, he's gotten like you can see the growth live and i played him in a live game and he beat me before mcs and i was like wow like this is you know growth yeah I, <laughs> there he is yeah he's Bye. in the chat yeah. I, I gave him a shout out there that's awesome yeah, you know big credit to him because some people they just think an ebook's gonna solve all their problems too it's not you have yeah. to go into practice mode you play a lot of games to get better at the game yeah and credit to five for really putting you know commit into the ebooks that I put out, and obviously he learns a lot of his stuff on his own. So credit to him for getting better. And I saw him, you know, right on the edge of top 100 this week as an example. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and you know, for me personally, like for my weekendly experience, I, I've definitely gotten better. Madden 20, I was I was terrible. Like I, I I think I'm trying to think when I even started playing Mutt, and and maybe it was like Madden 18 or 19, but it was very much like, you know, I would build my team up to a 99 overall, and then I was I beat the game, and then I go and I play MLB the Show, and then you know, like I, I never I and I always hated the online experience. That was the part that I didn't like, you know, because yeah. I might win 50 percent of my games, you know. Um, and I think it was around December of Madden 20 where I started using middle linebacker. I was a D line user for like my what? entire Madden experience. Oh, yeah, what, what, what podcast so I, am I on? I was you? bad, K Harry. This is not a comp podcast okay bad. this is a casual i'm the casual you're the comp guy it's the you're streaming as a d-line user yeah no no i was not i i, I didn't start Thank streaming until i started yes Thank no oh no can you imagine God. i i would not have made it out of a month streaming using using my d lineman um, <laughs> well, i have a funny story about yeah that. yeah like, Madden 20 i played a whole weekend league as a d-line user it was the most <laughs> miserable experience of my life and the thing is i have a really good relationship with joke we've met yeah, yeah. in person in uh, madden tournaments in philadelphia and I pl I matched up with him in weekend league, and I was a D line user against first <laughs> So yeah. that was an absolute adventure. I he obviously oh my won god, game, like, it was a lot of fun. I still won like nineen games as a D holy user. shit. Kind of yeah, so, so, so uh, <laughs> fun. that's wild. So that actually might be the glitch. Nineteen wins is pretty. That would be better than my. I I got an eighteen wins this year, and that was my best ever. Uh, last year, I think I was at I got I hit 18 as well. Like I haven't been able to get over that hump. So it sounds like I gotta get my hands on virtual lab partner to be honest to get me over that hump. And like, yeah, that that's something I'll definitely be looking into. I know. Yeah, um, weekend league is super weird this year because the skill gap has shrinked a little bit. Yeah. Where like 17 wins got top 100 on next gen Xbox this week. Wow. And that has never ever been the case. Usually, yeah. maybe in June. Year, yeah. Yeah, last year, like, the bare minimum for Weekend League from, I want to say, September to maybe December was 20 wins. Like, you, if you didn't get 20 wins, you were not getting top 100, no chance. I've gotten top yeah. 100, 18 wins, 
19 wins. I saw Mr. Football got top 100 with 17 wins. Wow. It's absolutely unbelievable. The skill gap has been – like it's been shrunk a lot. But if you want to take that next step and really yeah. you know, get to that 18, 19 win mark, you get some serious awards out of it. And I think it's worth the um, – you save money on packs by you know getting better at the game. For sure. I mean, it, the only thing that that kind of sucks about it is that there's no coin quick sells like uh, like there were last year. It's it's tough to be. I mean, uh, you, you saw my reward yesterday, right? For my ninety-one plus. Yeah, you, you what would you get the ninety-one? Um, uh, what's the name? Brewski. You got the Teddy Brewski, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. For somebody Nasty. Who got, somebody who got thirty-nine in the week. My ninety-one plus topper. Yeah. Was a card that was worth a hundred thousand coins. I That's honestly, I didn't even know. My touchdown packs were worth a combined fifty k. Or I could get yeah. that for one quick sell last year. It's yeah. horrible. We've done the rewards. It, it, it's bad. And honestly, like, I didn't even remember Teddy Bruski getting a card this year. Like, it's that bad. It's like, oh, I see a middle linebacker who's who's short and slow. Yeah, no, he's not making anybody's team. Even he, yeah. he's going to be a vanity piece on a Patriots theme team, you know? He's not even going to exactly. be a user for anybody. Yeah, they don't even, like, the one defense that's usable now with linebackers is 6 1. Yeah. And, like, it's just so bad. Hopefully yeah. they expect it for next year. Yeah, it, it is kind of like a, a crapshoot now with the rewards. I think yesterday I pulled uh, an 88, an 84, and an 82 out of a midfield pack. And that was like 90% of my value of my entire weekend league rewards came out of a midfield pack. And then I get to my touchdown pack, and there's not, there's like an 82 and a bunch of gold. I was like, this is this is bad. Like, it's, um, you know, I, I don't think I've had that generic, uh, you know, big pull out of any of my weekend league rewards this year. Now, I'm not getting top 100 like you are, so at least the Fire Fantasy packs make it somewhat yeah, worth your yeah, while. But... Fire, yeah, my Fire Fantasy was super tough. I got uh, I got a limited out of it, so that was nice. a nice pull for sure. But still, like, it, there's no, like, that should not defend not quick, like, I got lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would always take the guaranteed value in that case, unless it's 100%. Fire, so. Yeah. Especially late in the season when you're trying to kind of, you know, build money to, I don't know, whatever it is, like, you know, give away cards. You want to you get your coin yeah. stack up. You want to re-roll training. Like, it, exactly. it's nice to be able to kind of just grind head-to-head -head seasons late in the year and make a, a crap little coins. But, yeah, this year people have to get a little bit more creative. Now, are, are you a guy who, um, are, do, you, do you spend a good deal of money on the game to be competitive for ladders and whatnot? Or, or you're not a yeah. no money spent guy, are you? <laughs> not not one of those cheesers. Yeah, Murphy, Murphy D asked me if I was a no money spender. We we, we hate crazy. those guys around here, so just be, oh, be careful I, how you answer. <laughs> definitely not no money spent. I I want to say I was probably spent between three and four. However, yeah. I did get a nice blessing from Mudhead, three hundred dollars worth of packs, and I got to keep all that. Nice. Uh, right now, right now I'm sitting on two point five, and nice. you know I'll get, the, get the greedy. If there's a good limited that drops tomorrow, I'll grab yeah. them for ladder. Yeah. So, but yeah, definitely you gotta spend money in the game. I play the game a lot as well. I've done every single solo in the game, and sometimes it doesn't feel like enough. Right now, I feel like I'm good, just yeah. because I have that you know crazy coin stack. But for a while, like it's tough. It's still tough to get these cards unless you go top 100 weekend league because those yeah. like, quick sell for that even it's like 250 thousand coins, and like yeah. obviously that's like one player, like yeah. top tier player. Yeah, so it's tough. Exactly. No, and it's, uh, yeah, the no money spent grind, I, I feel for those guys. Like, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, guys like Up and Adam, guys like, um, you know, Buffalo K who do the, yeah, Up and Shambles, we call them. Um, you know, they, they, they do a great job with the no money spent stuff. I am terrible at it. I, I'm terrible at implementing all these methods. You know, we haven't really had a good reroll this year either, which has kind of been no. frustrating. Like, there's... Yeah, and there's, they, no, and there's, there's no good cards out of the solos either. Like, they're fine. Yeah. They're 90 end caps. Yeah. But, like, guy like Joey Bosa is like yeah. so mid-tier compared to a guy yeah. like lauren taylor exactly it's just not the same at all like in mlb you could really get those guys that are oh, yeah. complete equals to the chipper jones the soriano's yeah. at the time right yeah right it's crazy i really do feel bad for those guys too Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I found I did kind of dabble, and, and I know you did as well, played a little bit uh, in the off season of Madden, played a little bit of MLB The Show, and it was amazing. Like, within maybe, like, three weeks that I played, I got my team up to, like, a 96 overall, like, you know, just from grinding sets and, like, um, fairly easy to get these really good players, you know? I, I've always found MLB The Show does a good job of making it accessible to everyone. Um, yeah. yeah. I was hoping that Madden would go more that road, but this year they definitely went the opposite way, I think. I think it became harder yeah. to get a good team. Yeah, it's gotten harder every year. And in Madden 20, I was completely no money spent and made clubs and took W to a four-point game. That's right. wild. Now I've spent $400 yeah. on my team, and I sometimes it doesn't feel like it's good enough. It's yeah. just a crazy – like, and then one of the things is I got rid of salary cap for ladders 
So yeah. that was a much, you know, budget friendly mode. Yes. For a lot of people just to have a budget team and go in and everybody's equal. But yeah. Since they got rid of that and it's unlimited mutt or MCS, it's absolutely unbelievable what you've yeah. seen on this table. Oh, and I, I don't even know if you've played any um, mutt draft this year. I did a little bit of mutt draft before my <laughs> mutt team was. No, no, not now. Like, but I, like the first week, like early access, I wanted to play head to head on stream. I didn't want to stream me doing my solo grinding and stuff, you know, so I played a little bit of Mutt draft and tried out like the new, you know, team builders and stuff. And, you know, back in, in August, it was fun playing with, uh, you know, Justin Fields quarterback and stuff. They haven't updated the draft class at all. It's still, really? You, yeah, wow. yeah. I, I saw, I think it was Skimbo went in to do like, uh, uh, to play a little bit of Mutt draft and the, it's literally wow. the 84s. You're getting 83 Frank Clark at right end. Like it's, it's, it's an unusable mode and, and the rewards are terrible too. So That's there's really funny. yeah, it's it's crazy because Mutt Draft needs an ability round really badly to make 1000%. it thousand percent. Yeah. yeah, and like think about it, right? In Madden 20 and Madden 21, there was an EA major played without Gunslinger. And That's Steve disgusting. Blue, where yeah. you need yeah. to have an ability to pass the ball. And Dusty, like, obviously credit to him. Dusty's another good friend. You yeah. were in halfback base damn near every play. And yeah. He won, right? Yeah. He won twelve. He won twelve nothing on four field goals. Oh my god! <laughs> in the last game, so yeah. think about that, right? Like they don't—they don't know the, how the game works, where you need an ability to pass, whether it's escape or set feet, gunslinger, yeah. etc. And they yeah. still haven't updated the draft class. That's so—that's super funny. Oh that's yeah, I—I I, I had an experience with that today, playing those five solos for the Rising Stars, and I was playing with uh, the Joe Burrow, and like literally trying to throw a touchdown. PA boot over. He's like oh, twenty yards, yeah. but naked. Out of the back of the end zone, like I try, I had to redo a solo like three times. I was like, "What the hell?" Like without having abilities, this guy cannot hit anything. Uh, it, was, it was super frustrating. Eventually, I, I was able to master the rookie level difficulty, but uh, it was still. I was like, "This should not be this difficult." Um, so yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, you know virtual lab partner. Um, we've kind of talked a bit about your your TikTok and and YouTube as well already. Um, so what are some of your goals that you have set for? Um, is, is that something where you're kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to set these very specific goals. You just trying to kind of, yeah. You know, tell me about your mindset for those platforms more or less. So yeah, for TikTok, if you're not following already, I don't know why you aren't. My TikTok's awesome. It's hilarious. I'm not even gonna like be modest about it. I'm oh yeah. I'm so happy with how TikTok is going. Basically it's a bunch of Madden memes, crazy clips I find from Weekend League and other stuff. And I just put, you know, my table's broken sound effects and like other fun stuff on it. I yeah. think it's hilarious. And right now, I'm just under 2,500 followers on TikTok. I started in June. So definitely love the growth in there. Hopefully, I hit a million likes by probably next year. I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. And um, I know a lot of people who started their careers in streaming off TikTok. My guy, uh, Chuflaka. Yes. Crazy example. Like, I'm obviously not going to get to 100K at any point soon. But he was solely off of TikTok. Yeah. And got a lot bigger. Uh, My guy, Vinny, uh, he's like an MLB guy. But he has, like, I want to say 25K on TikTok. And yeah. uh, he gets all of his viewers, like, from there. He just started YouTube, like, recently, too. Yeah. So, yeah, two good guys I talk to a lot from that. Obviously, YouTube is a much bigger, you know, platform in terms of, you know, possible monetization. Yeah. To TikTok. So, I definitely want to – I just started YouTube, obviously. So, I want to get that up to 500 subs by the end of the month. That'd it's going to be, awesome. be tough, but uh, we'll uh, we'll keep the grind for sure on that one. And then, obviously, for Twitch, I want to be as entertaining as possible. I don't really have any goals. Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to be pretty cool. I'm not yeah. super close. I did double my viewer count from last year, though, which is kind of That's cool. huge. That's yeah, growth, pretty- yeah. And it's, yeah, not, so, it's not linear. It doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not like it, it would be amazing if your growth was kind of like on a consistent line going up and you just knew the longer I stream, the longer it's going to go up. But it's not always like that. It's like there's hot months, cold months. You've been on a, on a crazy heater right now though. Like I, I've, I've been, you know, seeing what you've been doing Madden 22 and you've been, you've been having a lot of success. Like it's been, it's been kind of wild for you with the Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's, it's been really fun. I think I can attribute some growth to TikTok, but yeah. I also feel like I, between like the networking and, you know, getting better at the game every year and kind of running my own stuff. I think that's all super inclusive. Yeah, that point. for sure. And uh, I, I will say I was watching uh, at work today. I caught one of your TikToks uh, and, and I, I, I didn't realize what you, like you legitimately can kind of blend the, the viral videos with like I was watching the one where the chick was pulling down the, uh, the uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what do you call it? Yeah. The projector screen. I, I was dying. I was like, it, like, yeah, you do a really good job of that. And, and, you know, we talked about this a bit in the Discord call, like, I, I was reading through, I was being a creep yesterday because I was preparing for the podcast. I was looking through your YouTube, watching yeah, some of your watching, videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I was reading somebody else's comment and I was like, damn, there's like real knowledge being 
you know, spoken in the comments here. Like a guy was like, it looks like you've been doing YouTube for a long time. Like just, you know, even though you're relatively new to the platform, you, I think you really understand, like, I don't understand YouTube, but I, or maybe I understand it, but I, I don't have the skills to, I mean, you, do you use an editor for YouTube? Do you have somebody who helps you out with the editing? Yes. And... yes. My guy, it's a blitz is a joy to work with. He's you yeah. know, super grinder. He edits are visionary as well. He's a little bit bigger of a YouTuber yeah. than I am, but, uh, he's been really good. He's been really flexible to schedule. He's always turned around things on time and he gets nice. the YouTube platform a lot more. I watch a lot of MLB YouTube actually, because I find yeah. it more enjoyable than Madden YouTube. Yeah. Just because the creativity with like new players, team builds, there's a lot yeah. more content yeah. flexibility with MLB than, than uh, Madden. So yeah. I'm taking a lot of my inspiration off guys like your friend Kyle and like Samuel Adams. And yeah. Little, little man. I try to design the videos at least that way. But credit yeah. to Blitz, he's a good editor and uh, somebody who I'm going to work with for a while on this. Yeah, absolutely, and, and he's a, <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. When you're working full time, it's like you got to kind of realize what you can do on your own, and then what you need to outsource to. Like that's an important thing too. You know, me, I I have to outsource almost everything because my technical knowledge is is dog crap, for lack of a better word. I've gotten better at it. You know, the longer I do it, but um, you know, you know, if I were to try and make my own emotes or do anything on my own, it would it would be subpar. So you might as well go and get it done the right way. And it's a blitz to the streamer too. I was I caught one of his streams last week. Yeah. So he's on Twitch as well, so that's pretty, uh, he's plugged into yeah, the community. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Blitz on any kind of platform. I can try to throw his link in the chat. But yeah, he's a good yeah. dude. He does uh, TikTok editing as well. I edit my own TikToks just because I have the time for it. And I yeah. kind of like, I have a vision that I don't really like want messed with, so no issues yeah. on that from my end. But uh, yeah, he's a good streamer. He's a good dude. Uh, we're going to go see an Eagles Jets game in a month, which would be kind of cool. And we've also nice. like met in person before, too. Oh, awesome! That's great. And is he a Jets fan, or is he an Eagles fan as well, like you? Yeah, he's he's a really big Jets fan. He's from uh, about like thirty minutes from me. Nice. And, uh, we've hung out like outside of like streaming multiple times, so he's a good dude. Nice. Well, you know what? You actually kind of perfectly gave me segue now by mentioning the Eagles. We can go back to the the initial topic that I thought we would start out with, and then we t totally branched off. Um, so you're you're wearing your Eagles sweater right now. Were you wearing that to work today? Or do you put it on for the no, stream? No, I wasn't. I just want to look like Mike Ditka for the stream. You feel me? With I love it. I'm liking it. The retro vibe. Yeah, it's solid. So you're, you're a big time Eagles fan. Uh, is that just, and well, I see you got a Phillies uh, flag up there in the background too. So is that strictly based on geography? Like you're, is that the closest team to you? Does everyone around you root for the Eagles pretty much? Not really. So no? I'm actually in like Giants Jets territory, surprisingly. Oh, okay. So the uh, MetLife Stadium, which is where they both play, is about 45 minutes north from here, where Philly is like an hour, 15, hour and a half south from here. Yeah. Uh, my, my dad's from like the South Jersey area. So um, usually the state's kind of divided between like South Jersey's, like your Philly sports and like North Jersey's, like your New York sports. So yeah. I get the origins from the South Jersey side of New New yeah Jersey, so okay yeah. nice and, and so uh you you've obviously got memories then of of a championship in your well actually how many one championship in your life or two 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 yeah so the phillies in 08 and then the flyers folded in 2012 2013 i think yeah and then obviously the eagles in 18 yeah yeah and, and honestly like uh like you know as a vikings fan we've never we've never won a, a super bowl and it looks like we're in uh, a downswing whereas you guys have a young team right now like you guys have pieces yeah. hopefully pieces for the future we're definitely in a situation where our team is uh getting older and possibly on the cusp of a complete blow up and sell the farm and get a new coaching staff and all that so like what, what's the uh the vibe for eagles nation right now like what what are the obviously right now the record's not great but, but what are the – is it an optimistic vibe? Are people upset right now? What's the feeling? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird team. Um, <laughs> I think the receivers are going to definitely be promising. Devontae Smith had his best game as a pro on Sunday. He yeah. had, what, 115, five catches and a touchdown. He looked really, really good all day. I think Hurts' best game as an Eagle was also on Sunday. Yeah. I Personally, I'm still optimistic about Hurts because he hasn't played a full season yet. He's yeah. been under two new coaches now. It's not a, it's not an ideal situation to be yeah. in for Jalen Hurts. So I think I'm still, you know, obviously we'll see the end of the season too. We still yeah. have like a chance in the playoff spot. And the yeah. Vikings just still have a chance in the playoff spot. It's a weird year in the NFC. Yeah, so we'll it is. We'll see how that kind of goes with Hurts. I think the defense and middle linebacking core is really bad. Like we yeah. didn't stop the Chargers. I think we saw the Chargers once on, or twice yeah. on fourth down. They didn't punt once on Sunday. Granted, the Chargers are very good, very good football team. Yeah, yeah. But uh, our defense has been really struggling, 
And I think there was some kind of crazy stat where, like, five times this year, the Eagles gave him an 80% completion percentage to a quarterback, and that's just, like, not a good stat you want to be in. Wow. So we're going to turn for defense here. I think we get a guy like Thibodeau in the draft. We have Miami's number three overall pick as of right now. That's huge. Get, yeah. you know, really good pass rusher, you know, good linebacker, really good corner. I think that'll really help the team out a lot. Yeah. But, um, a lot of people are calling for the coach's head. Yeah. <laughs> Still, like, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird few weeks. I'm gonna say. Yeah. And um, if Sirianni proves himself, we'll keep him around. But I think he's a good candidate right now to be fired after one year. Yeah, which is tough. Like, I, I think I'm not a big fan of firing a coach mid-season, which I know a lot of people that you know very knee-jerk reactionary fans because you know fans are fanatics, right? So you know we we see. Three losses in a row. We want the the coach's head, but like I, I think wait until the end of the season and, and getting a full year of evaluation is a good yeah. thing. Um, no. They coach ever right? They are him middle of the season. That makes no sense. So yeah, yeah like you said, they'll go through like a full year and uh, really do an evaluation after. Like I've seen coaches get fired for one year. Like the Browns did it like three times in a row or something. So yeah. uh, it's something that could definitely happen. But I still think it's a weird team, and they need to finish up the season. We'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely. And you guys have had kind of like I remember when I first got big into football. I'm pretty sure like Andy Reid would have been the head, the head coach of the Eagles yeah. back then when Donovan McNabb was around, and then you had the weird like Chip Kelly experiment too, where he tried to bring a college coach and get yeah. this weird offensive scheme into the NFL, and it clearly didn't work out too much. Um, you know, it, like for you, like who would be your all time Eagles? Like players that you kind of. Um, looked up to over the years that you would have their poster up in your wall and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's one that's going to be, uh, no matter what he will, nobody will be replacing. That's Nick Foles. Uh, I will be the biggest Nick. Wow. Foles fan yeah. Ever. I think he's the best quarterback in Eagles history. He has a ring. McNabb doesn't have a ring. Vic doesn't have a ring. Cunningham doesn't have a ring. Ron Jaworski doesn't have a ring. It's always going to be Nick Foles for me to start. And obviously wow. that's the performance and that Super Bowl run. Beating the Vikings head in 35 to 7. Sorry. Uh, he was absolutely <laughs> magical, unbelievable. I've never seen any, anything like that in professional sports. Yeah. Um, in terms of running back, Brian Westbrook will always be my favorite, too. Loved watching him play when I was you yeah. know, growing up in like my teen and uh, no, younger, like middle school years. Um, wide receivers, T.O. was a fun to watch for a few years, yes. but he kind of faded out like bad with McNabb, so it wasn't great to watch either. Sean. The Sean Jackson loved as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, Eagle twice, which was kind of cool. Uh, I met Brent Selleck, who was a tight end for, yeah, yeah. for 11 years on Sunday. I got a matching sweatshirt of his. So that's, that's awesome. Nice. I got the inspiration from that. That's so, sweet. So, uh, yeah, loved watching him. And obviously, Zach Ertz as well. We've been pretty spoiled with tight ends over the years. Oh, yeah. And, and how does that? How does that line up? Yeah, I, I typed in the chat. I said, "Is this guy serious?" With the Nick Foles, I I couldn't tell at first whether you're joking or not. I mean, but but no, here's the <laughs> yeah, here, here's the thing. Like you know, I I the only championship experience that I have as a Toronto fan, like you know, I was too young to remember the Jays uh, winning the back to back World Series. I was alive, but I was a, an infant, you know. Um, and I do remember the Raptors winning, and it's true. Like you know, guys like Kawhi Leonard, it was only a one year athlete in Toronto. One year, uh, not even true. he played sixty games in the regular season. He didn't even play yeah. a full season. But like I, you know, I got my bobblehead of him carrying the Larry O'Brien Trophy you can, win. You can, wear, you can wear his jersey for life now if you want. Oh yeah, exactly. And like, like there was no hard feelings. Like when he left after a year and went to go close to his house near San Diego yeah. and play out. You know, like like when you get a championship, it's such a special thing, and it's so hard to do in any professional sport. That like you literally all the guys on that roster, whether they played like a tiny role or had one memorable moment, like they're immortalized. And that's the thing I guess with Nick Foles is because uh, he had. Two stints with the Eagles. I remember he was drafted by the Eagles, right? And um, he was very efficient. I remember he was like, he didn't throw a lot of picks and he threw a lot of touchdowns. Um, yeah, so first yeah. year with Chip Kelly, he had 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. We yeah. Made the playoffs, and we lost to Drew Brees on a game winning drive by three points. Yeah. Uh, it was unbelievable. And like everybody was like a Chip Kelly believer at that point. Yeah. And the next two years were just misery afterwards. Yeah. And like Nick wasn't like doing as well. I think he got hurt, hurt as well. It didn't help. Hard. Sanchez on teams, yeah, which was definitely tough. Yeah. But uh, then, yeah, obviously he came back after going to the Rams. He went to the Chiefs afterward with Andy Reid again. They came back to the Eagles. Obviously, we went on the run with Super Bowl. Yeah, and there's some magical men. Yeah, no, no, that that was definitely in the Philly special. Obviously, like such a cool like NFL films moment. Like you know, yeah. seeing him catching a touchdown in in the Super Bowl too was absolutely wild. Like it's 
it, it's it was a pretty memorable run and, and they were definitely underdogs that year too which is always something you know we were we were um, underdogs we were underdogs in the first round of the playoffs as a one yeah. seed for the first time in nfl history yeah like, that should say enough i was actually at that game eagles versus falcons whereas you know matt ryan julio jones very very good team they just came off was that the year? Or is that yeah? They just came off a Super Bowl run the previous year. Yeah, right? the, well, yeah, when, when they lost to the Patriots, the collapse, yeah, right? Yeah. That would have been the year before, yeah. Yeah, so the NFC champion Falcons came into our place with a backup quarterback for us, and we were underdogs for the yeah. first time ever in one seed. Crazy game. Uh, he, Ryan had this ball up to Julio Jones, and uh, Ronald Dart made an amazing play on the ball, and then that was just kind of the start of the run. Obviously, yeah. the Vikings were next in oh, the Super Bowl. You guys flooded us. Like I remember, we we had our kind of signature playoff moment, at least in my Vikings memory. Like you know, the Minneapolis miracle was was crazy yeah. against the Saints, and it kind of felt like you know we were hosting the Super Bowl that year in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That's where you guys won, I guess, right? Um, yeah, yeah. That that because I remember that was the first time I went to actually see a Vikings game in person, which is a super long drive from Toronto. Like it, it was a road yeah. trip with a bunch of my college buddies. Uh, U.S. Bank Stadium was maybe in its, like, first or second year, and it was beautiful, and it was such a cool thing to, like, you know, it felt like after that Minneapolis Miracle, I was like, this seems like a Team of Destiny kind of thing. It seems like we're going to go on now and make it to the Super Bowl in our own hometown and win it, and then at the end of the first half, I was at my buddy's house watching the game, and I... I turned off the TV and I and I left. I couldn't I couldn't watch the end of the game. You guys killed us. I was like, no, it's over. We have zero fight. Our secondary is so overmatched, and we were winning seven nothing. I think we scored on the first drive. Yes, you did. Yeah. And then Rudolph we never scored had, again. <laughs> I know Rudolph went on the Rudolph had a nice touchdown to begin the game. Definitely yeah. was concerned to start, but um, we actually punted the ball back to y'all, and then we had a pick six with uh, Patrick Robinson. Yeah. And you know, thirty five straight is just unbelievable in any football game, let alone in the conference championship. So, yeah. yeah, man, it was a fun ride for sure, but uh, we are very far past that at this point with this yeah. current Eagles. That was oh. like four years ago. It seems like an absolute An eternity. eternity. Yeah, the, the roster turnover has been a lot. Like, there's probably only a few yeah. guys like uh, Fletcher Cox still around. And even him, I, I yeah. saw last week, uh, you know, the Instagram post or whatever. It's, I thought he was going to be leaving. I thought that's why he was posting Philly forever. But it sounds like they're, they're not trading him now. He's going to be with the guys yeah, Cox is good. Um, Brandon Graham was still on that team. There's not many, though. It's yeah. probably single group at this point. It's really sad. Obviously, Ertz was a big one. He caught the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he, he got traded to uh, the yeah, Cardinals. So, yeah, yeah, it was it's just sad. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Um, and, and, you know, the last thing that I, you know, we, I feel like we covered quite a bit here. We got to talk a little bit about the Eagles, too. Um, you know, a lot of the people that know you from Twitch or from your other platforms, it's uh, – they know you as a, as a comp guy. So like with the MCS coming up, so you um did you did you compete in the last um, tournament that just happened? Uh, how did no. how did that go for you? No, I didn't do the last tournament just because I had it was three weekends plus eliminations. Yeah, so that's like a month of weekend commitment, which I had yeah. no interest in doing. And like my girlfriend was like going, you know, she's in Delaware. We're long distance right now. So oh yeah, that's tough. Compromise. A full yeah. month of weekends, when that's the only thing, the only time we can commit to that. Yeah. So I didn't do on that at all. I was totally smart choice. Yeah. And then, yeah, this tournament just started last week. I'm five and three right now. Um, probably have to win two games to be in that top like 50, which is fine. If you have, it's based off a of point differential, which is cool. So oh, yeah. if I have a plus, if I have like a plus four point differential, I think I'm like top 75, which will be yeah. completely okay with me and I'll just stop playing. It's minimum 10 games, yeah. seven and three. I'm more than okay with that at that point. Nice. So so you like the format this time, like with the, the lead up to it. It's not as, uh, not yeah. as much of a time commitment. You can still have a life. Yeah, two weekends is a little better. It's still a lot though, but it, I love the last format. For MCS, it was so much better. Yeah. Did you play like salary cap in Madden 21? Or no? You know what? I I didn't. I was still kind of getting my feet wet, and I know salary cap. Like for me, having a, a god squad is such a benefit. So for me, mutt definitely favors. You know, whereas on an even playing field like salary cap, I would get exposed a lot more. I think. Um, I'd probably be. Yeah. I'd probably like to play it now more. Now that I have a better understanding of the game and yeah, realize that really it's just the the skill positions and and speed at those positions that makes a difference in those modes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when like last year competing, you could load up any night and qualify. Whereas this year, you're restricted to weekends. Like, yeah. Because last year I was playing maybe four or five times a week off stream. I didn't want anybody to like you know play and lurk me on salary cap ladders and i qualify as a two seed for the jaguars club as a result yeah like you can load up and it's based on like your rating and like how good the person was that you beat now yeah. you're strict time wise every game counts the same so if i play f- like j wall and yeah. i beat him 
that's the same thing as beating you. No, yeah, no. exactly. No, no, no. That's that's a perfect <laughs> reference point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And if you lose them, right? Like it doesn't. It, you can lose to him. Then you can lose to like a, a bad person too, and like yeah. the rating isn't like as bad either, right? Yeah, and everything everything counts the same, and it's just frustrating that way. It's yeah, really like the format from the last uh, ladders that we had in twenty one. Which I guess that would be more like weekend league, like strength to schedule. Is that is that yeah. kind of the same yeah, the, configuration yeah, of it? No, that's the thing, right? There's no strength to schedule in this yeah. tournament. In the yeah. previous ones there were, and I like that a lot. Yeah, uh, the DCs in online is like that's why they went to this format, which I like. I totally get for sure. You don't want to like worry yeah. about this connect. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I like the format a lot better from a flexibility perspective. Yeah, you know, what would be lovely is if they could actually fix their servers and not have to worry about that. That, that but I, I mean, easier said than done. I know there's a lot of people on a lot of different internet connections. For me personally, like like my DCs stopped when I got. Um, you know, uh, an Ethernet cable plugged into my PC and yeah. into my like that made it. I didn't realize how much of it was actually me relying on Wi-Fi. Um, you know, yeah, um, no, it definitely helps, but the the, the game still disconnects. Like, I've disconnected yeah. plenty of times on Ethernet. Yeah, and uh, like, every time you lose in like a ladder game, it brings down your rating a lot. And yeah. you pretty much have to win two games to make up for your disconnect. And I've done that multiple times. Like yeah. In one. Me. so that yeah. was that was tough at that point so i get that part of the format yeah but if it, you know gets to that point of the servers where it's a lot more consistent then they, they could go back to the other format. yeah and, it, and it's and and it's two winning two games to make up for it against like the sweatiest opponents out there too which exactly. is not an easy exactly. thing exactly. which you yeah. could dig yourself a deeper hole after disconnect playing on tilt and exactly. then taking another loss and then you got to win four games to make up for those yeah. two losses so yeah and if you yeah if you disconnect against like a really bad player too that will drop your rating down like by 50 places so it, yeah. like that's happened to me too so you have to yeah. really really make up for it like in three or four games sometimes get to where you were yeah and, and so what what will you be doing like do you have a group of guys that you lab with like are there people that you're kind of uh you know in contact with leading up to these tournaments or are you kind of more of a lone wolf yeah. like kind of just doing your own thing a uh, little bit of both. So in terms of a slot, I don't have a lot of people to bounce my ideas off of. Civil is the biggest one because you usually yeah. run it a lot. Um, but otherwise, I kind of just lab my own stuff with a slot. Obviously, I have a great community. And yeah. people like, are very willing to play lab games and like test stuff, and I'll, I'll be there for that for sure. Uh, I do a little bit with WCM. I'm still, you know, kind of connected with them. Yeah. Uh, so that's like they multiple people have made like good MCS runs, have good MCS uh, winnings. And then uh, people in uh, AMST, shout out, you know, Geezy. And, uh, yeah. Some other guys there. Yeah. Let's go, Geezy, the 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 rival. We we actually you guys played uh, on Luch's stream just a little while ago. So you were coaching yeah, up Luch. <laughs> uh, how did Luch do? I, I I'm pretty sure I wasn't able to catch that stream. Was is he a good yeah. student? Is he VLP material no, or what? No, he's he's, <laughs> he's sub the VLP, which is cool. But yeah. um, it's very hard to like talk out adjustments and like try to see the screen. And can you do that communication? That's something yeah. where you know, as a coach, I haven't been a lot of like, I haven't done a lot of coaching sessions. Yeah, I like some things. I just think in my head, like, oh yeah, he's gonna know this, but like, that's tough about coaching. You have to like talk everything out. Yeah, you know, or for something sure. where I definitely want some work, but um, yeah, we had a lot of fun. He lost, but um, I was told the last time I played, he lost by like thirty five. He only lost by like fourteen. So I guess that's progress. Right? There you go. Oh yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the first time he played Gogizi, every touchdown score was a hot sauce shot as well. So. I, it, so, so he would have had to do quite a few of them, whereas this time only two of them. So that's not bad. That's progress. Um, so, okay, Harry, um, what, what's your – so I think you mentioned to me you might be streaming later on tonight. What's this week looking like for you? So for people who are looking to kind of learn more about uh, you and, and get more involved with your community, um, what, what kind of stuff do you have on the docket like right in the immediate future right now? Sure, sure. So going to do YouTube twice or three times a week. I upload TikToks, you know, six times a week. That's mostly more like memes and everything. I still think it's entertaining and uh, something, you know, to grow. Oh, but yeah. um, it's not something where, like, it showcases me. It showcases just, like, in general. Yeah. Of Madden, which is cool. Um, I'll be streaming weekly probably tomorrow night. Uh, mm -hmm. Might do some stuff tonight. I'm also in some uh, money CFMs. Nice. So I'm in a $50 nice. CFM with a lot of other pro players that I'm, like, 6-2 and two, top of the division. Nice. Like, second, the second of my conference. So I'll uh, be doing that as well. And then I'll do MCS on Saturday. Saturday and Sunday this week, and then I'll Beautiful. be ready for ladders. I think if I make the elimination, which I'm going to guess I will, yeah. it'll be the uh, first week of December is the first ladder. Nice. Or, um, elimination, like, day. So, so basically what you're saying is there's a lot of opportunities for people to watch you, you know, doing your thing on your channel yeah. coming up soon. A lot of, a lot of competitive sweats uh, to watch. So basically the exact opposite of what my stream is. Uh, <laughs> if you guys like that vibe and you want to see somebody who gets after it and, and is really damn good at the game, 
check out my guy K Harry. Um, I drop, I just dropped all your links in the chat there. So if you guys could go follow him on all those platforms and get him to that 500 YouTube sub goal, that would be absolutely huge. Um, you know, yeah, so that. yeah, and, and you know what? If if you're if you're still uh, kicking around, um, you know, once yeah. I'm done the stream, I got a CFM game. It's not it's not a competitive money league CFM. Uh, it's actually current gen PS4, so it's a little bit less sweaty than what you're used to. Um, but hey, beggars cool, can't be uh, choosers, man. I got to get my hands on a PS5 one of these days. Um, but um, K Harry, man, it was an absolute blast having you on here. I feel like um, you know, I got to know a little bit more about you, and and I'm just like super impressed with everything that you've been been doing, and and just like the the trajectory of where your channel is going and, and honestly just uh yeah very grateful that you took the time to sit down man appreciate it oh i i appreciate you hosting you've always been one of my favorites and um as somebody you know full-time job trying to grind this at night i know the struggle man and i know you're grinding out here as well so i uh, credit it, you and uh, whenever you need that lab session just hit me up man I hey absolutely and and already i you know i need the lab session i need the tiktok glitches i need i need everything I, 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 you, you already you you already made yourself very available and I, and I appreciate that man but um k harry all the best to you man um i hope to see you with that purple check mark next to your name uh at the end of madden 22 you're on the path my dude and uh and we'll definitely collaborate again soon man i appreciate it